magic is just a natural ability that most of us haven't consciously rediscovered. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to the September 8th episode of Paradigm Shift Radio, the new interactive show to assist in the evolution of consciousness. We began the show working through a few technical glitches and covering some of the regular Paradigm Shift community conversation. From there, we welcomed on EA Coetting as our special guest. EA has dedicated his life to studying the hidden knowledge in societies that address things such as real practical magic, summoning entities, soul travel, and much more. EA is the author of eight books that I more appropriately refer to as strategy guides for you to pursue your own experiences. With plenty of knowledge and experience in his own hands, he is dedicated to sharing information and teaching to help empower others on their life path. Visit his website at becomingalivinggod.com and facebook.com slash eacoetting. I am sure EA will be on again in the future, but for this one, it is recommended that you have a pen and paper nearby because you might want to take some notes. As always, tell your friends about Paradigm Shift Radio, join the Facebook page, and help change the world. See you next week. All right, hello to all our international listeners. You are listening to the future of global communication and education. This is Paradigm Shift Radio, and I am one of your co-hosts, Skull Babylon. Though this week again, I am your only host for tonight. Though there will be other people who will be on air with me. Uh, first things first, guys. Um, I'm sure some of you have probably noticed if you're listening right now. For some reason, I'm not seeing a live chat popping up in uh, in like the blog talk radio window that the show normally takes place in. So, which is really peculiar, and you know, we can still actually make do with this. So, if you're actually listening to this, da, 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 add like, yeah, I don't know, I don't really know. Actually, okay, an alternative that we're gonna have to do, guys, and like again, this is just making do with what we got. Keep posting. You can add comments to the blog talk itself in like this web like on the address that you're on right now. You can like click add comment and add comments that way. Another way would be for someone else who is on the ball to like make a tiny chat right now and then to create a tiny chat and then literally we're just gonna have to transition the live chat into the tiny chat in order to like still get the same interactivity and then I'll still be able to keep an eye on it and I'll be able to get your guys' uh, questions and stuff from there. So, again, this is sort of a weird technical hiccup, and um, I'm sorry for the hiatus on this one, guys. Like, I just want to make sure that we we can get something up and going before we really get into the meat of the show, so. Excuse me, just taking a drink right there. Alright, so right now, guys, I'm literally... Okay, so I'm literally going to have to be like refreshing the page for the blog talk in order to see if posts are coming up. But I hope somebody posted uh, a link to the tiny chat. But that said, guys, thank you for tuning in anyways. I know a lot of you have been sharing this show, and it's unfortunate that we're having a little technical glitch tonight. But we will be able to make do. I assure you that tonight is going to be a very, very cool show regardless. And we still want people to be able to call in. So the number to call in is free to do so using Skype, and that's the best way that we recommend it to, recommend you to do so. So if you're listening to the blog talk, create an account or log in with your Facebook as well, and then you'll see the Skype icon next to the uh, number up there, which is 347-539-5493, and click that button. You'll launch, a, launch the application Skype, and it's pretty straightforward, so that shouldn't be a problem. And first things first, guys, we'll just sort of keep doing this uh, in regular paradigm shift sort of sense. So we're going to start off with uh, a little bit of 10, 15 minutes sort of introduction and community news involving paradigm shift because I know we're always going to be having new listeners. And in particular, uh, I want somebody to be able to call in within the first 15 minutes and tell me about something that they've been doing through a paradigm shift community in their area. So we'll get into other topics as we go into the show, but for starters, I want to have somebody call in and just who is doing a paradigm shift community in their location and to tell me a bit about it and uh, just tell me how things are going there. In that uh, that side of the news, in terms of the paradigm shift London side of things, uh, we had a regular Friday meeting, which is just like a casual social gathering that we have at a yoga studio. And I'm, I'm happy to report that they're actually actually getting larger and larger. The one that we had on Friday was the largest one so far with almost about 30 people. And there are people who are coming in from out of town. So that's great to see that it, it, some of the people that came out of town, you know, they were people who said like, oh, you know, there's a group of us who 
just go and like sit in the forest and chat about this stuff all all the time and now we suddenly found like more people who are doing the same thing but in a more organized communal sort of sense so right now a lot of what we're going through guys is people coming together that's what we're noticing more and more and more and it's just like this natural thing i mean it's almost like magnetic in a sense like our energies are coming together and it's almost like unavoidable and i'm sure like once things really start to ramp up we'll 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 be at a certain point and then we'll look back and we'll just say yeah you know i couldn't have imagined it happening any other way sense just in the sense that it is actually this is the whole 2012 this is all like community and people coming together and making that next step forward in the right direction so again i'm just uh Jeez. I'm sorry, guys. I know there's some weird technical glitch going on with my microphone right now, I can tell. And I'm literally having to double-check my own technical stuff because this is the beauty of being a one host. And it sounds like it's okay right now. So, again, apologize for the technical hiccups, guys. Um, I'm trying to refresh the page. Again, please, someone who knows about making tiny chat, make a tiny chat. Post it as, like, an ad comment in this uh, web address for the blog talk radio and then take the chat over there because that's something that we want to have as soon as possible but that said um yeah so the meeting that we had within paradigm shift london went great that's awesome and uh i'm actually going to be able to bring on a caller within the uh right now actually so for those of you who haven't been uh, up to date on what the whole paradigm shift thing is, basically, like paradigm shift is a collective of communities all across the world at this point who are just focusing on bringing people together to engage in conversation and practicing the things that we don't usually get a chance to practice talking about. So, popular topics are things like astral projection, meditation, spirituality, quantum physics, um, energy healing, modalities, tarot reading, things like that. So that said, I am going to bring on the first caller. So caller. As I bring you on, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hi, my name is uh, Roscoe. I'm calling from uh, Dresden, Ontario. Hey, Roscoe. Um, yeah. I was actually at that meeting on Friday in London. I was one of the people you were just talking about uh, that sit in the forest and uh, yeah, talk about about stuff like this. So I, I know exactly. Uh, yeah, I know who you are. Like that's that's. I'm glad you guys made it out, man. Like, uh, go ahead, like, share some of your thoughts on, because I know you posted about them on the Facebook page, but, yeah, if you just want to, like, reiterate, like, how was that for you? How was that experience, like, coming out to that meeting? Oh, man, that, it was amazing. I, uh, I, I couldn't believe the energy in the room. Um, like, just being able to go and, you know, talk about that type of stuff with, with like-minded people. I'm not able to do that normally, so having a whole, uh, room of them, you know, it was a great experience, and I didn't, you know, uh, I felt so awake after, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. and, and you were adding to the conversation, too, which was good. And then there are a few of your friends and a lot of people in the room who I know were just, like, very quiet and very focused on listening, which is super cool because when you have that many people in the room, it's hard to try and get everybody trying to talk over each other. So a lot of it is really just about listening. Right, right. Yeah, it is, and uh, listening and, you know, actually trying to learn something from what you're hearing, um, like we were saying, not listening and trying to think of a response, actually, you know, taking it all in and hmm. you know, trying to get something from it. Right, so people often listen with the intent to reply opposed to with the intent to actually understand, so, but yeah, it was, like, what were some of the highlights in terms of the conversations that brought that we brought up in our uh, consciousness campaign? Because, I mean, we covered quite a bit of the ground, so what were sort of the highlights for you? Well, um, just lucid dreaming, that was like one of the big ones for me. Um, I actually added some people that I met at the meeting. Um, I added them uh, on my Facebook here, and I've been talking to them, and I've been uh, talking to them about lucid dreaming. They've been sending me links and um, sending me uh, book ideas, like some books I can read and, you know, just things like that. That was a big highlight for me. And um, if you remember, I, I brought up that I had that sleep paralysis problem. Hmm. They, um, uh, you know, kind of gave me a little bit more insight into that, so... And then that's not just me, like, reading the, uh, what I find online. I'm actually, you know, getting insight from, from people who seem to know what they're talking about, so. Yeah, man, like, there's there's a lot of people who have been studying this stuff for a good, you know, good portion of their life. So, I mean, in the same way that you get people who are, like, experts in in the field of, like, uh, math, you know, mathematics or whatever, you get people who are experts in this sort of 
understanding the, like the different states of like the astral realms and 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 that's actually the thing that that sets me up nicely because what we do have planned tonight and Roscoe I'll, I'll let you go eventually but but we do have a friend of mine EA Coetting who is a really interesting guy and, and he's very experienced in terms of astral projection and astral travel and and even evocations and invocations and a lot of the information that's um talked about in the grimoires which is something we'll we'll talk about like we're like the actual practice of magic and what is magic and this idea of the left hand and the right hand path so actually dude i'm gonna have to let you go soon enough but I think it would be interesting if you feel um, in, if you feel the the need to call in later in the show by all means because we're going to be having people on air talking with uh, myself and uh, EA Coetting. So um, is there anything else you want to say, man? Because I think uh, we're just going to get moving on and get EA on pretty soon. No problem. Uh, I did have a question, but I'll I'll wait till later on. I'll give you a call back. Sounds good, dude. Well, thanks for calling in and thanks for coming out. I I, I really appreciate it. And I'm it, you know it's actually it's like making a difference in people's lives. This, this type of stuff. So. Oh, it is. We'll, we'll be there next Friday, too. You'll be seeing us. Cool. Sounds good, man. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Cheers. Take care. All right. So that was Roscoe, and uh, he was one of the people who came out to the Paradigm Shift London meeting that we had on Friday. So that was pretty good. All right, guys. So before I bring EA on, good news. We do have the tiny chat up and running. There's already 13 people in it. Like I said, this is us. This is just us, like adapting and overcoming. So, if you're listening to this in Blog Talk right now, refresh this window. Check the top comment that I posted that says, like, "Ask Skull Babylon." Join the live chat here. Copy and paste that link. Log in with your Facebook, and then do that. So, even for EA, uh, since you're listening to this at this current moment, I would suggest that you even log in there as well, and we'll be able to keep an eye on everything together as the questions are coming in. So, again, there's about 13 people in the live chat. Um, hard to say exactly how many people are listening right at this moment, but I know a big part of it is thanks to you guys sending this information out and getting more people involved with the show. So there's still time to do that since the meat of the show is really once we get EA on and get talking, get into some of the information that he has to share. So there's still a little bit of time to promote this show. So if you haven't yet, post it on your Facebook walls, get it out there, invite your friends, tell them a little bit about what the thing, what the paradigm shift thing is. Like it's really just about creating conversation and education Communication and communication, which is what I said right off the start. So, guys, that said, I am going to bring EA Coetting on, and I'll uh, actually hold on one second. I'm just going to read the bio that he sent me first, and then I'll bring him on right after that, and he's going to tell you who he is. So, EA Coetting has invested over a dozen years studying the mysteries of the occult and their practical applications and has spent the last decade teaching and guiding others in their ascent. Coetting has authored eight full-length books on the occult, has led and founded several esoteric orders and temples, and is now leading a movement called Becoming a Living God, through which he asserts that not only can individuals reach godhood in this life, but also that this movement provides all with the instructions necessary to achieve absolute knowledge, presence, and power. So with that said, I'm going to bring on... EA now, EA Quetting, also known as Eric. So, welcome to the show, Eric. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks for having me. And you know, I was listening to your intro there, and it sounds like you've got a a, a pretty awesome community going. For sure, dude. It, it, it's I'm glad that I know we talked about working together and doing some sort of interview way back in the day, almost a. Uh, Almost a, it was in November of 2011, so almost a year, and I think that you know everything sort of happens when it needs to happen. And at this point, I, there's a good audience behind this show, so I'm happy to be able to introduce them to the information that you have to share with us tonight. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm uh, you know I'm excited to talk to you and, and hopefully get some callers and get uh, some activity in the chat room and and really you know just have a great conversation with everybody. Mm-hmm. So that said. Introduce yourself. Like, who are you to the people who have heard of you or met you before? Well, you know, uh, I've I've been like like you were saying in your intro. There there are people who are are experts and who devote basically their whole lives to the pursuit of uh, of ultimate knowledge and power through through channels that aren't aren't uh, n- you know part of the normal uh, curriculum. Um, and that's you know that's seeking after the uh, the the mysteries of the sages and the, the sorcerers and the prophets. And, uh, and, and I kind of fit myself into that, uh, into that category. 
where um, you know I've, I've spent uh, a couple dozen years now just chasing after knowledge of, of really the unknowable, and uh, and I think I've found a pretty good chunk of it. And uh, so you know I've written at this point uh, eight full length length books on the subject um, of occultism, spirituality, metaphysics, uh, and and more than anything. Uh, ritual application of these things, uh, where, where you can actually take these spiritual ideas and create substantial, concrete, verifiable changes in yourself and in the world. And, uh, and, and so that's basically where I'm at with this, uh, this project, this, this movement, Become a Living God, is, is getting people to realize they have uh, all of the attributes of Godhood, omniscience, omnipresence, om- omnipotence, and that they can tap into that at, at any time. Uh, through through these, uh, you know, this isn't part of the new age. That's one thing that I, I, I kind of have to correct people on. This is the some of the oldest uh, spirituality and science that, that that ever existed on this planet. And so it's just a matter of tapping yourself into into that uh, that paradigm. For sure, man. Like I, I I totally agree. Like a lot of a lot of this whole process that we're going through isn't so much like learning something entirely new, but like remember what we are innately capable of experiencing and a lot of that is is uh and this is almost something that you talked about um recently for those who are familiar with the coast to coast you were uh, on coast to coast and had a nice chat with george nori there and um i know there's something that you talked about where it was just being able to experience the exhilaration of like those other states of um, of the like perceiving the world through those other states of consciousness where the veil begins to like fade or, or you start to see things a little bit differently like how how did you come into that um perception like or like was that something that you, that you were experiencing at a young age like when did sort of this become like real to you well you know let me tell you there's a, that that's that's really an interesting story on its own i uh uh, you know, I, I had some kind of mysterious circumstances around my birth and childhood, and uh, and I ended up um, uh, in, in the uh, the adoptive adoption foster care system. Eventually, got adopted in at four years old with a uh, a pretty hardcore fundamentalist uh, Mormon family, and uh, uh, you know, here I am with this Mormon family, but I'm I'm, I'm uh, doing incantations when I'm four or five years old, uh, rhyming incantations to try to levitate objects. And I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lighting candles and trying to do spells. And this is coming out of, you know, nowhere. We, we didn't uh, watch TV or movies very much when I was a kid. Um, there was obviously no internet. So yeah, I, I kind of spontaneously started uh, tapping into this and uh, never really knew why. That was always kind of a mystery, and I figured I was just a, a, a strange duck and that, uh, that that I left it at that. Well, you know, only a few years ago, I came into contact with my birth mother, and uh, and after talking to her for a bit, um, you know, she said that, uh, that that's something that runs in our, our heritage, that, uh, that she's a witch, that her mother... Uh, my grandmother was a, a, a voodoo practitioner, and, and basically you can trace my bloodline back generations and see that that's something that uh, that actually travels almost in our genes. So, you know, that's that's one mystery of, of this whole thing that I don't even understand yet is, is you know, how is something that delicate being passed through the blood? But it, it seems to be for sure. Mm-hmm. So a lot of what you present yourself as openly as someone who practices the black arts or the dark arts. Can you explain that? Because I know when people hear that right away, some of them are going to get sort of turned off by the idea. You know, a lot of people are focused on this whole love and light sort of thing. So in terms of, like, the black arts, like, what is the purpose of the black arts? Well, you know, you, you really do, and, and, you know, part of what, what you're saying in, in your, your introduction is that, that uh, we would talk about the difference between uh, you know, black magic and white magic and the left-hand path and the right-hand path. Well, you know, the the only real difference is is that uh, in, in the left-hand path, in the dark arts, uh, you don't restrict yourself in any way for any for any purpose at all. Uh, you you do what you feel needs to be done, act as God over your world, over your life, and uh, and, and you you accept the consequences for that as well. Uh, and I'm not talking karma. I mean, the whole idea of karma is is completely misunderstood. Um, 
but uh, but there are natural consequences if you uh, you know if, if you harm people, if you control people, manipulate people. There are negative consequences to that that are that are naturally occurring. You don't need you know a threefold law to come and kick you in the butt. Uh, it's going to happen anyways, just because of the natural consequences. But uh, but with that in mind, you, you know you don't have a uh, an ethical obligation to to basically tie your hands from being able to execute power as you see fit. So if you see changes that need to be made in your life, you make those changes. And and if you're armed with with what most people call black magic. You are completely unrestricted. You have no qualms about looking through a grimoire, finding the name of a demon, and sending that demon out to do your task. Uh, you have no issues with pushing people or other obstacles out of your way if they're in your way. Um, it, it, it really is just a, a, a lack of limitations, that you're not limiting yourself by, by anything but your own ethics. And... You know, it's, you're not living a, a, a Nietzschean Superman, uh, you know, lack of morals. You, you, but you have to discover your own ethics that you you want to live by for your own reasons. But uh, but but you're not tied by what the church or the state might tell you or what other people think or or these uh, really uh, false ideas of, of morality and ethics. You once again, you simply look at your life, look at your world, see what needs to be changed, and change it. And and once again, you have an entire arsenal at your fingertips to do so. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of this change, like how does this take place? Like what are some of the ways that we can alter our reality? Like almost, I mean, the term vacuum programming is something that's uh, been used by uh, Hasim Nerfat. I forget his full name. But it, like I, I'm not sure if you're entirely familiar with that term. But again, like how do you manipulate reality, so to speak? Like if someone's in your way, how do you go about moving them? As an example, well, you know, let's look, let, let's look at that example of uh, if somebody's in your way, how do you remove them? Um, there are a lot of ways, and, and and the first thing that a person who who wants to try to get somebody out of the way, and you know, I wrote I wrote an entire book about this called Baneful Magic, and uh, and it focuses on that that subject alone. And uh, you know, if you want to, there are a variety of rituals that a person can perform. Um, and most of these would be called curses. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of it does just rely on getting yourself into the right psychological, psychological and physiological states that, uh, that really trigger a massive, uh, power flux in your, in your body, in your brain, and in your environment. And, uh, and then direct that, funnel that towards the person who, uh, who you're trying to remove from your, your path. And, uh, you basically have to, at that point, let the power, let the spirits, let the uh, energy that you're putting into motion do its job, and uh, and and it will choose the. It will always choose the path of least resistance. So, um, usually, what's going to happen is that person is going to have uh, um, either a, a, a positive windfall in their lives that 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 uh, makes them move away, but more often it'll it'll be something negative uh, a death in the family or or some kind of disaster that makes them uh, actually move to another city but that's 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 not the end of it i i've seen that uh, that once you set that into into motion there's a a residual effect where it keeps uh, um pushing them and pushing them farther away sometimes to their ultimate death sometimes to the point where that person will develop a uh, cancer um or other illnesses that, that that'll eventually cause them to die or they'll, they'll uh, find themselves in car accidents, plane accidents, uh, um, natural disasters. I mean, I've seen just about all of it with that one specific example on how people are removed from your life. But, uh, but uh, you know, whatever, whatever the actual cause is of, of, uh, of them, uh, you know, being pushed out of your life, uh, it, it is permanent. And, um, not that they always will die, but that isn't that isn't a fact. And uh and if you keep a, a journal of, of experimentations like I do, you know, I'll write down every ritual that I perform and its uh and its eventual effect, uh you you just you start to see that it that, that it, it goes far beyond coincidence and that's the first thing people want to say. Even myself when I performed my first few rituals and saw the successes, I go, Well this is just coincidence. Well, you know, you do you do thousands of rituals like I have, and and document every one of them. There's more than coincidences that's happening there. There's there's uh, uh, you know 
85 to 100 percent. Right. It, it it does become science. You're, you're basically applying the scientific method to something entirely uh, um, insane. I mean, this you know when when you look at this from a logical logical standpoint, this should not be happening. But you have the empirical proof that it does. Now, a lot of people would be uncomfortable with the idea of, like, if I were to ask this question, does the black arts involve manipulating or taking advantage of others? Like, is does it? Like, what would your response be? It's like, specifically around the word manipulating or taking advantage of. Well, you know, that that's actually something I'm asked quite a bit. And a lot of people, when, when I present myself as being a practitioner of the left-hand path and a... Uh, um, and a black magician, they go, well, you know, that's that's pretty infantile to 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 be walking around, you know, manipulating everybody and love spells and curses and and that sort of thing. Yeah, that is infantile. And I don't know too many people, you know, over the age of 25 that that are in in the left hand path and make that their practice. Um, and and what I mean by that is that when when you're young, when you're 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 filled with uh, with the zest to show off your power and to see how much power you have and to push limits, yeah, you're going to do that. You're going to do the love spells. You're going to do mind manipulation. You're going to do uh, uh, curses, etc. Um, but you know, as as you progress, that really gets to be less and less part of it. For where I'm at now in my own journey, the left hand path basically is is a path of the forbidden. And and uh, manipulating people does it, is is really the uh, the tip of the iceberg because when you get deeper and deeper into it, you're talking about you know peeling back levels of of understanding that that perhaps humans aren't really intended to discover, but you can discover those levels. Um, power that you know you'll you'll put these powers into effect and make changes not only in your life but on on a worldwide scale. And and look at that and go wow uh, one one person literally can become a living god and uh, and it's humbling. Hmm. So so what are some um, in terms of like practical magic like even the definition what what is magic in, in the way how you see it and not just like David Copperfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, and that's you know the David Copperfield that that that's illusion. Um, right. And and. Uh, Magic is uh, performing, you know, it's making substantial and verifiable change in the world without the use of physical medium. So it's completely non-physical effort applied to to create physical change. So, uh, you know, let's say you, uh, one of the most common uh, common rituals that people will come to me for or that I'll teach people is uh is attracting money or, or manifesting money in their lives. Just about everybody wants more money. And, uh, you know, you do, you do a few simple rituals that you can do, whether you're calling on spirits or just using energy that's out there to attract that money. And, uh, and what you find is that, uh, that at first you're going to find opportunities opening up for you. You'll find that, uh, um, the jobs that, uh, that, that were never in your area all of a sudden start appearing. You'll find people, you know, friends of yours you know, will call you shortly after the ritual is performed and say, hey, you know, there's an opening at my company. Um, to the point where, where I've gotten to, uh, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do a, a meditation or a ritual to attract money. And uh, it comes to me almost immediately where I'll finish the ritual, I'll blow out the candles, and I'll get a phone call from somebody saying, hey, by the way, you know, here's this opportunity or here's uh, – Here's you know some money for this project that you were involved in, and uh, it, it, it's really pretty cool because it's uh, you know there's no delay at all between between the desire and the fulfillment of that desire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I think what you said to sort of sum up the idea of what is magic, it's it's to do something, some sort of act like through the non-physical that in some way manipulates the physical. Now, in I mean in terms of like. You know, this is just sort of me adding my own sort of perspective on it. In terms of, like, multidimensional realities and stuff like that, is one way – tell me if this is, like, an appropriate and effective way of thinking it. Rather than thinking that, like, okay, I'm going to do a ritual and then I'm going to, like, change the world around me, more so it's, like, I'm doing a ritual and I'm going to, like, attune myself to a new reality that these events occur within. Well, you know, I mean, you're you're right on the money there. You look at uh, the – 
the Copenhagen debate, the uh, Einstein, Rosen, and Polensky. Uh, I might have the last the last uh, name wrong, but basically these, uh, these these great thinkers of the early 19th century get get together, or, or sorry, early 1900s get together and discuss what is reality, and they really wanted to hammer it down. You know, you had Schrodinger talking about cat and, 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 and multiple universes and such, and, and really everyone wanted to nail down what is reality. And the only thing that they could agree on is that reality is that which is observed. And in that vein, that once the, uh, once the observer begins observing, that that which is observed changes. Now, what that basically means is that, uh, that that we all are basically creating this world in in the moment of our observation of it. So what ritual is doing on a uh, quantum physics level is is basically sh uh, shifting your all. Yes, I'm sorry, shifting your observation of reality to such a, an intense degree that that reality shifts not only for you but for everybody else. And that's the issue with. With quantum physics and the uh, you know, individual reality theory, is that uh, that you're not you're not existing in a vacuum. My consciousness is experiencing its reality in the same uh, lineation as your consciousness is. So so there's a connection there. And in order for for me to basically superimpose my reality on yours and everybody else's, you have to have quite a bit of firepower behind that. Otherwise, you're a schizophrenic. I mean. There, there, there really is a difference between creating substantial change and thinking you're creating substantial change. You know, it needs to be verifiable. It needs to be, you know, you, 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 you know, I talk to so many people who are who are supposed, you know, witches and warlocks who, who live in absolute poverty and and uh, can never manage to to keep a job and and whatever. And it's well, you're obviously missing something because this is supposed to empower your life. This is supposed to enrich you and, and bring abundance to you. Not, uh, you know, not, it, it, it's not just a, uh, uh, a head game that you're playing with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, uh, this is just sort of something that I'm keeping an eye on the chat right now. And uh, just to sort of take a step back, for those of you who uh, are listening to the show, take a look at the first comment that we have posted right underneath it. Join that live chat link and join the conversation that's happening in the live chat. And, uh, this may be another technical thing that I just wanted to take note of. Um, some people may be having trouble listening to the show because there may be a listener cap on it for some weird reason. But again, guys, the shows are always going to be available for download and to re-listen to afterwards. I do post them up on YouTube. So if you haven't yet, go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash PSR, and those have all the archived episodes there as well. And this one will be there again. And once this one's up on YouTube, we'll be able to share it around, and you'll be able to probably listen to it again through the original Vlog Talk link. But but what I was saying was something that came up in the chat that just sort of caught my eye is this idea that um, someone said magic is just the natural ability that most people haven't consciously rediscovered. Like, is that is that how you see it as well? Like, this is something that like we as conscious creators are like innately sort of. I don't want. I don't know if the word entitled is correct, but it's something. It's it's, it's part of our natural abilities to be able to consciously sort of create this reality around us, and then. You doing it, doing being able to do it in like a variety of different like effective ways, and that's where you sort of get into the idea of like <laughs> rituals and stuff. Well, you know, that's I mean, that's definitely right. Uh, you you look at the fact, you know, when when you really look at it, the the one thing that we can say for sure that separates us from from animals uh, is is our imagination. Uh, you, you can say intellect. You can say you know. It used to be opposable thumbs, but they started finding all sorts of mammals that have opposable thumbs. Um, you look at the, the fact that dolphins have uh, have pretty pretty high IQs for for animals. Um, so really, it's our it's our imagination that we can project into the future something that does not yet exist, uh, or or project through space and time something that, that doesn't exist. Now, all we're doing in in this in ritual um, meditation, these sorts of things. Is we're we're taking our imagination and basically putting jet fuel behind it to actually move yeah. it somewhere and push it. And uh, you know, once again, if you sit there with your imagination and, and just uh, you know think about what you might like, all you're doing is daydreaming. If you believe that that's 
true, all you're doing is becoming schizophrenic. If you take it and push it and it becomes reality, then you've bridged into magic. You've bridged into right. uh, the world of the occult. So, so it, right. know, that, that, that is the difference. But no, it is, it is an ability that everybody has. Um, and, and, you know, with this uh, Become a Living God project, I've got, uh, you know, thousands of people that are, that are following it and are subscribers to this. And, uh, and what I'm seeing is that, that, that what, what I've come up with is not a religion. It's not, you know, uh, uh, you have to, you know, believe this, you have to, mm-hmm. to act and, and, and do things this way. And, and then, you know, you might get results if, if the spirits favor yeah. you. No, no, this like is, str- this is it's like a strategy guide. It, it it really is, and 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 what it is is it's a system, and all and just like you know, just like combining uh, you know compounds, you're going to end up with a, 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 an end result that is verifiable. Um, it's you know, it's it's a system that you plug yourself into and you achieve results. Yeah, like it's you know, people sort of start realizing this idea that like this matrix that we're in, there's sort of ways that things are encoded and, and certain elements uh, sort of have consistent effects in terms of uh, this whole magic thing. I think, again, because we always want to bring this back to practicality, and I know you do have your program, but, I mean, as far as you're willing, please, let's get into some, like, practical things that the listeners listening here can actually, like, take with them and be able to actually, like, try, so to speak, after the show. And I think a good thing to maybe just start off, this is just something that I'm familiar with in terms of, like, magic, um, this is something that anybody can try, and maybe I'm sure you know you touch upon this uh, just in, in different explanations. But I mean, in terms of like sigil magic, like uh, something that people can do right off the bat is to practice like creating a sigil. And a sigil is just like a symbol, which you know, in the same way, it could be like a logo, like a company logo or something like that. But a sigil is something that has like a specific energy intent attached to it or behind it or like meditated into it sort of it's almost like you take a symbol and then you like program an intention into it and then by like meditating on that sigil it amplifies it into reality so in terms of creating a sigil and EA if you can add on to this just as a a quick explanation of what I was going to give take um take an intent that you have and then write it down on paper so it could be something like I want to find a more satisfying job something quite simple or not I mean as as simple as or complex as you want uh, but something that is realistic so to speak and then take that entire sentence and then take out all of the vowels so you're left with a string of consonants and then take those consonants and take out the repeating consonants so you're left with only like seven or eight or something like that and then take all of those letters and then start drawing them into each other just in the same way that you would doodle and just come up with a few different designs and then make it look like really magical or whatever you want and then once you're satisfied with something take that original intention of I want to find a more satisfying job as an example and then literally sit and sort of meditate and put that intention onto the sigil and then sort of each morning if you like wake up and sort of repeat this or just sort of acknowledge the sigil in some form it's going to help initiate the process where this energy is again it's you attuning yourself to the reality where that becomes like more real so ea does that is that something that i mean i i didn't read that out of your book that was something i sort of picked up somewhere else but does that coincide with how you well yeah i mean what 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 you're describing is 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 sigil creation that as it's taught by austin osmond spare and peter carroll in their chaos magic system and uh it's effective it is effective um however you know, there's a caveat to that, that uh, efficacy is is that in doing that, you're basically, you know, once again, you're trying to override the matrix with 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 your desire alone. Um, now, what what I've seen that's that's even more effective than using that chaos magic because once again, you're taking your desire, you're taking the uh, specific letters and creating a symbol out of them. Um, what I've found to be more effective is to actually go to uh, grimoires that exist out there. Now, grimoires are, are, are books that contain the names, uh, sigils, and uh, attributes of, of different spirits that have been evoked in the past. So you get a grimoire like the Goetia or, or uh, you know, the Black Pulet or, or any of these grimoires that detail these spirits and their attributes and, uh, and use their sigils. Uh, and, and you'll see, uh, at least I've seen, and, and a lot of people I've taught have seen a massive uh, difference in the power you're going to get from that, mainly because uh, if you're using uh, Peter Carroll and Austin Osmond Spare's method of sigil creation, like like you described it, um, 
once again, you're, you're trying to use your in, independent uh, mind and imagination to override the matrix, so to speak. The uh, you know the the was in, in in India is called Maya, the world of illusion, and uh, that that we're all immersed in. Uh, if you use a sigil that already exists, it's already been used by hundreds, if not thousands, of other uh, sorcerers and magicians and prophets to uh, to create change. And all of these sigils and spirits are are specifically aligned with one specific change that they can make. Then basically, you're tapping into something that's already embedded in that matrix. So rather, rather than having to force a completely new law idea, you're using something that's that, that's uh, actually uh, already embedded, already ready to go. So so you're basically getting into the computer program that runs this whole world around us, and and finding one line of code in there that's already set up. That all you have to do is switch it on. Yeah. Now that's something that I find really cool because you're familiar um like with the, this is something we we've touched upon in the past in a past episode of our radio show but the sigil that we actually have for the paradigm shift movements and communities and radio symbol like you're you're familiar with that i mean you've seen me post it and stuff right like you know what i'm talking about the sigil that we yeah. have yeah yeah like right now yeah, exactly. Like for those who, uh, I mean, if you anyone listening, just go to paradigmshiftcentral.com or even Paradigm Shift Radio. Like it's it's posted everywhere. You guys see it. It's like that black thing that sort of you know looks like a star, but it's like not like anything else you've really particularly seen. But that in itself, like when I was creating that when I was younger and stuff, I didn't really fully understand like this whole concept of magic, and it started to make sense to me more over time and then I started to realize like the potential as to like what I was doing but like now at this point it's really interesting to take what you just said and apply that to the potential that is behind the sigil that that we have already created because to me and again the whole idea of it is that people are able to like see what they need to see within it but for me I've always seen it as this idea of like focus and, and determination and like even duality and community and with a big emphasis on community so I think it's really interesting in a magical sense like in a literal practicing magical sense like how this sigil is coming into effect through this whole paradigm shift movement in terms of like people other side of the people on the other side of the world who are seeing it for the first time and then sort of getting like this download in some way or another simply by like viewing it in, in terms of like the fact that there's already energy attached to it and then the idea of like even meditating on that further and like further seeing like where we could take that sigil like I, i'd be curious like what are some like suggestions that that you could give as, in, in terms of like how we could further use that sigil to help like bring about to attune to the reality where we're getting what we want and what we want is like more paradigm shift communities and like more open conversation in what we're doing right now well you know you, you you've got that question but 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 before i address that you have an you have a, a, a question almost embedded in what you were just saying which is okay. uh that you received this, uh, you know, you didn't take letters of, you know, you didn't, you didn't write out what your desire was. You basically just sat there and it kind of came to you. Yeah, it came now, to you over time. Right, and and that I, I think if 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 you don't want to start working with with uh, spirits that exist, and uh, you know, that's that's fine. Uh, and and actually, one really potent method is to. Uh, of creating a sigil that, that doesn't exist yet is to sit down and meditate on your desire, what you want to have it have happen and have a pen and paper in hand and, and completely relax your mind and body and just receive, just put yourself into that receptive state and let yourself just start drawing. And, 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 uh, uh, it, you know, you can do it as, as far as automatic writing where you just hold the pen and you don't think about it and you let your hand just go, or you can just let yourself, uh, receive inspiration as to what this is supposed to look like. Because there is a, uh, you know, there's, there's imagination, which we all, you know, engage in all the time. And then, we, then you have what, uh, what the occult author Julius Ebola called living imagination or magical imagination, which, which is basically, Rather than imagination that's occurring in the uh, the electricity of the brain, it's actually being received from somewhere else. You're, you're receiving impressions from outside of yourself and just translating them through the brain, and and that's what you'll, you'll basically be doing. And that's what uh, I'm pretty sure is what you've done with this this symbol. Now, once once you have that, and that can be a sigil, and the sigil will be charged with already just just from your receiving it with whatever your desire is. 
And then what you want to do is hold that in front of you on a, on a piece of paper and focus on uh, on what, what it is exactly that you want to have that sigil do for you. Um, because what these do is they basically act like uh, almost like homing beacons or, or, or you know, they they're sending out basically a wireless signal throughout all of space and time to bring you what you're what you're asking for. So you're going to gaze at this thing, and 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 I have to stress the word gaze because you're not staring at it. You're not you know trying to mm-hmm. stare down the sigil and hope that it's going to do something or force it into it. You have to gaze at it with a relaxed gaze and mm-hmm. uh, and and focus you know, in your mind a picture of the final outcome that you're looking for. And as you're doing this, something remarkable happens. The lines of the sigil actually disappear from the paper and then yeah. reappear. And when they reappear, they're not on the paper anymore. They're floating. They're almost three-dimensional. Uh, yeah. And this, this is something almost everybody that I've taught sigil magic to goes, wow, it's happening. Uh, yeah. And and that's a, a, a signal that, first of all, you're in the necessary physiological and psychological state to, to really operate this this whole magical system, and and secondly that that one you know wireless uh, uh, beacon of the the sigil is active and and, and transmitting and receiving, uh, at which point you can you can fold it up, put it away, or you can use it uh, continually and meditate on it constantly to uh, to continue to bring whatever you're trying to bring to pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, I, I've definitely meditated on the paradigm shift sigil in the past, and we actually did do a group meditation on it, and people were talking about just you know similar sort of ideas, and and uh, just to sort of touch on um, what you were saying in the terms of like gazing at it, like one comparison that I think about, and and again like this whole gazing thing, um, use it on sigils, use it anywhere, like even sit out in nature and like look into the tree line or the forest, but a, a metaphor like it's something that I can that I compare it to is almost in the way that you would uh, look at like those magic eye books. So again, you're not like trying to stare it down. You're almost like looking past it. And then it's like when you soften your gaze, like the sort of the, the image sort of comes through. So, I mean, that's something that I just sort of compare it to, but yeah, I think that softening of the gaze is something that's been like involved within practices going uh, all the way back. I, I would imagine like, is that something that's sort of like brought up in a, uh, in any of the teachings sort of specifically? You, you, you know, um, the, the farther back you go, the less there is written instruction. Um, but sure. uh, but, but uh, that that gets to be, and the, there's a lot of uh, uh, oral instruction that went into to these these systems, passed from you know a mentor to to a student, and that's how I received a lot of my instructions. And, and very few. I, I mean, one one thing that I feel like I'm doing that a lot of people haven't is, is I'm trying to make the whole subject uh, comprehensible. And even my my mentors didn't do that. They they basically, you know, I would be I would be meditating or or, or trying to do ritual, and they'd say you need to relax more. You need, you need to open your third eye. You need to you need to release your solar plexus chakra. And, Mm-hmm. And I'm going, okay, well, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, but uh, but then when I took it with my Western mind and I was able to go, okay, what this means is you need to get yourself into the theta gamma sync, which are brainwave states that, that, that activate these things. Um, and you need to, uh, you know, relax this part of your body in order to make that happen. Um, it, it really kind of all clicks for me. Now, if, if your listeners really want to try something that's going to, you know, possibly just knock their socks off with direct contact with something spiritual. What they should do is go sit in their living rooms or or some room where they have an upright chair. You don't want to do this in bed because you might fall asleep. But uh, um, because you know you go to bed, you lay on the on the pillow, and your mind says, "Okay, it's time to go to go to sleep." Um, but sit on a sofa or a chair. Turn the lights off just so you have and and try. You know, if you can do this at night where there's less light, that'll be better. Um, you just want the, the ambient light, the light from the stars and the moon and the lights and whatever else coming through the, the, the windows. So shut your lights off, sit there, and gaze at, at, at the... Uh, you don't want to gaze at the wall. You basically want to gaze at the air in front of you. Uh, so unfocus your eyes, relax yourself, and just gaze at the air in front of you. And what you're going to find is that, uh, that it starts to look like static on an old TV set. I don't think TVs do that static anymore. I think this is like a blue string now. But, uh, um, you know, you used to stay up late and all of a sudden the TV would go into the static of black and white. And uh, uh, you'll start seeing that in the air. And then you'll start seeing these little particles of light appearing. 
and uh, and and a- as you look at that, you remember to breathe. Always remember to breathe. That's the most important thing: is to uh, not hold your breath as you get excited, but uh, but just breathe your way through it. Those particles of light are going to kind of come to life more and more. What you're going to start seeing is out of your peripheral vision, you'll start seeing people standing there looking at you but aren't in the room. You're going to start seeing faces appearing in the darkness. You might start hearing voices. Uh, and, and, and basically what you're doing is you're bringing yourself into the theta gamma sync where uh, your, your brain waves are really just flowing off the charts. You're accessing on a conscious level more of your brain than you, than, than you really do in any other time of your life. And, uh, and, and because of that, you're you're attracting to yourself uh, astral entities, um, you know, spiritual forces, etc., that are making contact with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I mean, there's a lot there that I think um, is something that definitely our audience would would like to hear some more about, like this whole idea of contacting other spiritual entities, if you want to call them that, like within these different states and and, and different ways you can do that and like the even the precautions that need to be taken when you're doing that because I know that's something you've talked about before you know like people people get into this whole idea of like summoning <clears throat> excuse me they get into this whole idea of summoning and um, I think that's something that some people sort of get freaked out about but in terms of discussion it's something that should be talked about you know like sort of like what's actually happening here in the sense of even like the difference between evocations and invocations and and things that people just need to keep in mind like i mean a lot of people are just sort of like thrown off by the even the realness of like summoning a demon so to speak so i mean before we get into our next caller let's just sort of like wrap up this um like this little chapter here of this conversation let's get brought back into it but explain to our audience like what is a quote unquote like demon and and what does it mean to actually like summon them yeah, you know, uh, the first part of your question is the hardest to answer because uh, the word demon is 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 uh, is not used in the way that it, uh, it it etymologically came about, which it you know right. it was daimon, which meant good spirit. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's that's actually something I was I I mean sorry not to interrupt you, but yeah, that's something that totally interests me. This idea that like society tells us that demons are the bad things when actually like demon was like the good thing it, it was trying to like keep us away from like the distractions or, or something like that but yeah please go on so yeah i mean no no if you look at it there there are uh a diff- uh, a million different kinds of entities that are out there yeah uh, in in the spiritual planes and uh there are those that are extremely malevolent that have nothing but hatred and evil and malintent and I don't work with those very often. Um, those those I might consider to be demons, um, but I don't call them by that name once again because that, that that's a, a completely skewed Judeo-Christian idea. Um, but I just call those you know malevolent entities. And then you have other entities that are 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 related with planets, with the elements, with the uh, with different human desires, different aspects of of existence, and. At, at any given time, any of these could be considered demonic. I mean, if anybody were to evoke the Archangel Metatron or the Archangel Michael, once again, Archangels, they're so terrifying that they could easily be considered devils. Um, and both of those do appear with quite a bit of fire around them. So, you know, that's uh, that, that, the line between demon and angel is, is pretty slim, if, if not non-existent altogether. Um but uh, you know these these entities are all basically uh, incarnations, uh, spiritual incarnations or embodiments of power, of power itself. Sometimes of knowledge. Some 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 exist for the sole purpose of teaching or of holding holding knowledge. Um, so so that's you know that that's basically what they are is 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 embodiments of, of power of, of aspects of uh, existence. Now uh, what what it means to call them. You, uh, you know, you perform a ritual of evocation, where, where through this, you know, this set system that 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 uh, works and works every time, you're you're able to call them to the point that uh, that initially you're going to make uh, an internal contact with them, where they're gonna, the the spirit's gonna descend into the room, and you're gonna feel it uh, intensely, just like a, um, 
just like another person walked into the room, only times about a hundred because of the, uh, the 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 intense magnetic pull that they have. You'll have uh, the temperature in the room shift. You'll have uh, wind blow through completely closed rooms. Um, you'll have uh, sometimes uh, flashing lights banging on walls. You'll have uh, all sorts of phenomenon that accompanies that. Now, as you proceed through the evocation, uh, it's going to become less of a uh, of an internal knowledge of this thing existing and being in the room with you, and you're going to, you're going to make out its features. Uh, if you're using something like incense smoke, which is used uh, quite a bit in evocation, then you'll you'll actually see the figure forming in the incense smoke, uh, an really? actual body. Yeah, it's uh, wow. it, it it gets it gets intense to the point where, uh, you know, what I like to say is that if you if you if you're if you're going full bore into an evocation and you're having the fullest experience you can, what's going to happen is you're going to find that the room around you and the whole world that you're able to see and experience with your senses disappears, and you find yourself in in basically a vacuum where the only thing that exists is you and the spirit that you're communicating with. And, uh, and then when you dismiss it, you're actually dismissing yourself from that crossroads you find yourself, you know, coming back to your senses, literally back to your five senses, and uh, and looking around, going, "Oh yeah, I forgot I live in this world," mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and then go about your life, and then whatever you call that and do occurs in your life uh, with, with quite a bit of force. Wow, that's that's really interesting, and, and I specifically like the idea of how, how you explain that, like these are embodiments of power and like power slash energy so i mean yeah like different ones represent different characteristics so i mean even the idea of like morpheus like morpheus is like related to the dreams and stuff like have you ever dealt with morpheus you know not 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 personally at all not uh not the way that uh that, that I've, I've evoked that that uh that figure um at all no okay all right is there a reason for that no <laughs> there, 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 there really is not um I you know it's just it, it just hasn't been uh, um, on my I mean there's really if you catalog it the the the, the entities that you can you can evoke are, are endless and uh, and and Morpheus hasn't really been uh, a strong pull for me and I'm not sure why now I might have to just on principle huh <laughs> I mean I, I guess I guess there's a, there's enough of them to to keep you pretty busy though I guess like um, I guess what what are some of the uh, do you have like a top three if that makes sense. I, you know, I have a top four, uh, and these are, um, it's uh, Belial, Abaddon, Amaimon, and Azazel. Um, what I've found is that, uh, and these are all what uh, what the, the Judeo-Christian system would call, you know, considered to be demons. Um, what I've found is that these are the three most powerful entities that a person can summon. And, uh, I, you know, I, I've evoked them, all four of them, multiple times, and I've also, I also evoked, uh, I evoked all four of them at once uh, around me, and I even went a step further, and uh, and evoked one of them, Belial, the demon Belial, into the body of my my ex-wife, um, and uh, and saw him completely possess her, and and uh, and got to speak with him through through her body. Um, so you know, I've, I've I've experienced those those four intensely and intimately enough that uh, that they've become, I guess, my my favorites for sure. <laughs> so um, okay, just right before we get into our caller, who we're going to bring on in a second, uh, I just wanted to clarify because I know the terms have come up a couple times, but the difference between evocation and invocation. So I was just going to sum it up. Basically, like, invocation is when you're, like, summoning a, a spirit, like, literally into you. Like, you, like, become it, which is sort of what you were saying when your, like, uh, ex-wife, like, was possessed. And then um, invocation is when you're, like, inviting the spirit into your space and you're sharing the same space with it. Is that correct? Well, now, now e okay, evocation is where you, as the operator, are calling the spirit up in in a form outside of yourself, and you're right. commanding that form and that spirit to take a visible uh, appearance uh, and, and basically a solid form. Because what we have to realize is that these these entities don't exist in bodies with two legs and two arms. They exist basically as as pure power and pure intelligence, and then they collapse that into this form for us. Now, 
in in the instance of of, of my ex wife and that uh, um, that experience, that was an evocation for me because I was the operator and I was calling him forth before me in an external form. Now, invocation is where you're calling the entity, power, intelligence, uh, whatever, into your into your body, into your awareness, um, or or if it's a group, into the group awareness. Uh, it's uh, an evocation is basically taking a, a massive amount of power and intelligence and putting it into a very small form, you know, the form about uh, six feet tall. Um, and and uh, an invocation is basically letting yourself receive a, more of a distilled version of it. That, that, that what, however much you can handle is as much as you'll receive, and you'll receive it internally. You'll receive it in, you know, through. Um, through the sense, through sensations, uh, uh, more more internal of nature rather than rather than external to the to the, uh, to the five mundane senses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very cool, very cool stuff. And uh, this has been quite an informed last hour that we've been going on here, guys. And we do have another hour lined up for you since this is a little bit of a special episode since we got EI, EA on as a special guest. And just before I bring on the caller, guys, if you haven't yet, check out EA's website. There's the Facebook as well, which is EA, yeah, facebook.com slash EA Coetting. So E-A-K-O-E-T-T-I-N-G. And go to becomealivinggod.com. And you can also check out the YouTube channel, which is EA Coetting Official. And, uh, Check out some of the stuff that he's already got up there. There's already been some other interviews that he's done with a couple other radio shows. So there's lots more information available. And if you're interested, get some of his books because there's a lot of work that he's put into that. And again, like think of them almost as strategy guides. So if you're interested in pursuing you know, astral travel and stuff, and I know we haven't fully gotten into that conversation, but I know a lot of you are always interested in that. If you want to learn more about different techniques to pursue astral travel, soul travel, his work is definitely something that uh, is recommended. So that said, we're going to bring on our first or our second caller, our first caller to have a little. Uh, he might going to bring on some questions and join the conversation here with myself and Eric. So caller, I'm bringing you on the air right now. And all right, caller, first name and where are you calling from? Uh, you Saki's from Australia. Can you hear me? Cool. All right. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, we're good. Yep, all right, Saki. So. So go go ahead. What would you like to say? All right. First, I want to say I really appreciate what you guys are doing, bringing people together and talking about all this stuff. I definitely want to get involved in practicing, having conversations. And what I wanted to talk about today was pursuing a dream, despite being discouraged by people who who don't believe in this stuff, who who say, "Oh, you're you're being unrealistic by what you're doing." I just wonder what what you have to say about that kind of thing. What would you say to people who are pushing you off the spiritual path? You know, yeah, um, yeah. yeah you know, I, it, it, it's it, it's really something that you come across a lot. Is that uh, uh, you know, I don't know if you've, you've uh, read the book by uh, the book uh, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, and uh, you know, it's a uh, kind of a kids' book of of, uh, of that exact subject. And something that my mind always goes back to because I read it when I was a kid, and and, and if everybody's flocking in one direction, the one the one bird that goes and does his own thing is is always you know ostracized. But but that one bird is, is Columbus, it's Jesus, it's uh, it's um, Nero, it's it's these uh, these great leaders, George Washington. It's it's these great leaders that uh, that basically take human evolution to another step because evolution is a uh, it's a mutation. It's one. It's a small fragment that happens to do something completely different, and then basically the rest of the, the group follows in that vein. And uh, I, I choose in, in, in my own my own life to to not address people at all who who try to take me off of that path, who who uh, who don't see my vision or at least don't respect it enough to uh, to to let me do it in peace. Um, I don't respond to them, and and. Uh, uh, I, I if if they get to be aggressive with it, I, I basically just write them off of my life. I just you know I don't need you. I don't. Uh, um, you're an obstacle in my path, and and uh, and you're going to be removed one way or another. I mean, it's it's that simple. So one one thing that it, that does come down to though is that uh, um, 
you you really have to solidify in your own self that that what you're doing is 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 your your dharma, your destiny, your your calling, your passion, um, and, and and then focus on that wholeheartedly. Abraham Maslow uh, said that um, um, that the, the greatest uh, the greatest state that a person can reach is to be independent of the good opinion of others, and, and that's basically what you have to become when you're doing anything as as bold as as uh, chasing down self godhood. You have to. Focus on that single-mindedly, with an eye single to the to to the goal. And you know anybody else that happens that that, that wants to come and try to shake you off, well, they, they themselves will be shaken off. Uh, if you're dealing with with uh, real real power and real knowledge, uh, you're you're going to receive all of the confirmation that you need. You're going to, you're going to have to be able to to create changes in your life and in the world. That are are completely uh, um, validations for you of, of what you're doing, and if other people don't see that, don't recognize it, don't respect it, you know that's that's on them. I don't, uh, I don't, I've, I've got too much to do to waste my time worrying about other people. All right, uh, call you're still on air, so yeah, if you want to respond. Yep. yep. Uh, well, I have read a, a lot of books lately, and synchronicities are starting to play out in my life, and that's why I have such strong faith. And that's what's helping me uh, keep to the spiritual path. I, I agree with pretty much everything you're saying. It, it's pretty helpful. Yeah, right. I, I, I like. Uh, yeah, that, that was very good. EA. I, I, I think what you touched upon in, in terms of the Dharma, like that's always something that we have to reflect on, and that's something that personally I've sort of been sort of trying to really wrap my head around this idea that quote unquote like everything happens for a reason sort of thing. So I mean that means dealing with those people who are those obstacles in your way because that's something there that's going to help you be able to grow. So it's uh it's important to be able to recognize the fact that like we are pursuing our dharma and like what is our, you know, like in terms of karma and dharma like just to sort of a lot of people sort of get mixed up um by like sort of the commercial term uh for the the commercialized term of dar- of karma and people think it's like this uh, negative positive sort of thing, but it's actually quite neutral. Dharma itself is like our life path. Like that's like the thing that is like ahead of us that we created for ourselves in order to like become that living God, so to speak, which is what a lot of EA work is about. So the karma is just like that universal energy that's going to push us back onto that path in some way or another, um, in order for us to like have that opportunity to keep on that path, like more consistently as we continue to move down through it. So being able to like recognize people in your in your way as obstacles like is not a negative thing. Like it's just being able to recognize that they're there for you to be able to move past it and be able to like become more of your authentic self. So that's just you know if I can add to that real quick uh, uh as a last comment on this subject is that uh you know, in, in reading uh, some of Wayne Dyer's works, um, you know, Manifest Your Destiny and, and uh, Erroneous Zones and several other books that, that Dr. Wayne Dyer's put together, uh, he says that your 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 soulmate is the person you cannot stand, the person that bothers you the most and, and, and is always, you know, confronting you with this, that, the other. Um, it's the person who challenges you. Because, you know, what you find, you know, most people when they think of the idea of soulmate, oh, this person is just like me. Well, they're probably not your soulmate because if they're just like you, they're really not pushing you to grow. But it's the, it, it is those people. I've, I have learned and grown so much more because of my enemies than I have my friends, you know, um, and, and that's perfect. Uh, they, they, they serve a perfect pur- purpose in my own development. All right. And call your soul it. So, yeah. Add that. Uh, yeah, I, I pretty much agree. I've got, I've got nothing else to, to add, really. Uh, uh, thanks I, all I, I wanted to talk about anyway. <laughs> yeah. But thanks for having I me on the show. It was, it was a pleasure. Yeah, thanks Thanks a lot for calling in, and, and I'm glad that, uh, you know, we have this whole conversation thing happening, because I'm sure yeah. you're not the only one who has that question. So, like, you asking that was probably some sort of synchronistic thing where people were, you know, sort of thinking the exact same thing, which is... Yeah, if that was one for me just then. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, yeah, no, not at all. So, yeah, we're all learning here. And uh, uh, just sort of like uh, before we l- let you go, because I think, um, guys, feel free to call in and join the conversation here as well. I do have another person who's in the queue. I'm not entirely sure if they're ready to come on air, but we'll bring them on in a minute. But just uh, to wrap up this conversation, I, uh, EA, what you're saying, like this idea of a soulmate is like, is this person who will make their mission to like psychologically destroy you? Like I think that's just such an interesting thing because that's something that so many of us are not looking for. Like in terms of like relationships, we're always like trying to like find a balance by like exchanging the energy that we have with like someone else. And I mean, like there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but I mean, I just like the idea of like imagine going out there looking for a person like romantically companionship wise who is there to psychologically destroy you and push you further on this path like that's just such a such a like radical idea of thinking compared to like the society that we're in but i think it's something really worth thinking about so i don't know if anybody has anything to add on that but (laughs) yeah all right well uh, anyway yeah, yeah. Thanks again for calling in, and feel free to call yeah. in another time. So we'll let yeah, you go. Sure. All right. Sure. I'd love Thank you. All right. Bye bye. All right. So uh, with that said, we are going to bring on the next caller. Uh, there's only one other caller in the queue, so caller who is calling from six eight three one zero two seven, bringing you on now. And caller, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. So uh, where are you calling from, and what's uh, your name and question? Uh, it, it's uh, Roscoe again from Dresden. And, and, uh, oh, Roscoe. How's it going, Brandon and EA? Um, I'm actually really glad because uh, the question I w- wanted to ask originally, you guys already brought it up, but I wanted to go a little bit more in-depth with it. Um, it's the demon thing. Um, I've had uh, sleep paralysis. I'm 25 years old. I've been having sleep paralysis since I was about 21 and I'm not inviting these demons into my knowledge, but they were extremely strong at first, meaning I'm sure you're familiar with sleep paralysis. Yes. Um, and at first they were extremely strong. I got to the point where I could uh, almost feel it coming on. I would breathe really heavy and, you know, I would I would be able to cut it off before it got too bad. Um, it actually stopped for a little while. Um, it was happening maybe once a week, anywhere from once a week to once a month. And it stopped for a while. For about six months, seven months, I didn't have it. Um, since I've learned all this, you know, like since I've become conscious, if you want to say it, um, it's been happening again. And only it's been like way more um, real now. Meaning I'm not only seeing them, I'm feeling them like in my bed with me. Um, I'm having like dreams, like lucid dreams that... I will come into wakefulness, and the lucid dream is still happening to me. And I was just wondering if you had an opinion on that. Oh, I definitely do. <laughs> the uh, the what, something that I've seen is you know, okay. So people get in, in, into spirituality, and the first thing they think is, "All right, my problems are solved." And no, no, friend, you have just discovered a whole new set of problems. Um, what what you find is that uh, it, 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 in the astral vision. This is a pretty dark world. Now, if you if you start practicing spirituality in a uh, in an active way, what you're doing is you're basically turning on your astral and your spiritual light to to, to full strength, and uh, so you're glowing really really strongly in a very dark world. Now we know if it's nighttime and you go turn the light on outside. Uh, you have moths and all sorts of nasty bugs that come and try to try to attack that light or try to jump into it. Well, that's what's happening to you, and that's what that, that's what happens to a lot of people when they first get into the occult and into uh, spirituality. Is that basically they're glowing way way brighter than they ever did before, and they're attracting all these little nasties, all these uh, these um, these entities, forces, intelligences, etc. That uh, I don't know that they necessarily mean harm, but but they're 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 not there to help you either. They're they're, they're basically just mindless insects that are attracted to to your light, and uh, you know they're trying to get into your light. They're trying to get closer to it. Um, th- there are some pretty simple things that you can do to to, to try to protect yourself from this. Uh, the first is to to cleanse your house. Uh, the, we, we've got astral 
and psychic residue that, that kind of leaks everywhere around us. Now, what, one simple thing that you can do is take a glass of water, put a little table salt in there, stir it around till, till the salt dissolves. That, that creates a great uh, conductor. And, uh, and so then you're going to hold that glass of water in your left hand and hold your right hand over it. Um, just, just let your right hand kind of hover over the glass. And then breathe in, and as you breathe in, feel spiritual light come into your body uh, through every pore as you're breathing in. And, uh, and as, as this light's coming in, feel yourself uh, feeling emotions of happiness, joy, peace, serenity, all these positive emotions. And then as you breathe out, push that light down your arm, out, out your hand, and into the water. And do that a few times. And what you're going to find is that, that water starts to, to glow almost visibly, where you can look at it, you can just feel and you can see that, it, that it's glowing bright. And then take that water and just sprinkle it around your house. And, and you know, if, if I feel like there's a strong buildup in my house, I'll do that and I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just say, you know, uh, um, you're not welcome, uh, uh, you know, uh, any, any, any basic statement of, of clearing the energy out. Uh, and, and with each of those flicks of that water, you're going to feel the air lighten up quite a bit. You're, you're actually going to find that it's easier to breathe, it's easier to see, it's easier to relax. Um, you can do that uh, also right before you go to bed, uh, and that, that'll help with that. And also to seal off your home. So what you can do is you can go to basically all each of the walls and visualize that there's a spiritual barrier that you're erecting, almost like a force field. And uh, and so you're just going to hold your right hand out. Now, what's important to remember is that your left hand receives power and your right hand transmits power. And so you're going to hold your right hand out, uh, palm towards the wall, and just feel yourself basically putting up a, a, an astral wall or, or, or a psychic force field there. And feel it just holding in, in place. Now, the first few times you do this, you might feel like it's just a silly thing you're doing with your imagination. That's fine. Um, but what you're going to find is that it, as you do this and do it to each of the walls until your home is completely sealed off, as you do this, you're going to find you're sleeping better. You're having less, less and less of these attacks, and uh, and your room is is ba or your your home has basically become a temple. And uh, and so you know even if you think at the time, oh, this is a silly, you know, uh, a silly little um, imaginative thing I'm doing, it does bear results. All right, Roscoe, how's that? Does that that is awesome. So I, I, I'm going to physically see this water glow. I was act, literally just, I was trying to do that as you were explaining it to me. So, but I, I'm right. going to physically see this water glow when I do this. Uh, you, you, well, you're going to feel it glowing, and 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 if you look at it, um, you know, if, if you're able to see it. Uh, you, you're, you're not going to physically see it glow if you're just looking at it. Uh, you, you, if you enter into a meditative state, you will. If, you, okay. if you're in that uh, that theta state um, of low brainwave uh, uh, fluctuation, then yeah, you are going to you, you are going to see a glow to it. But more than anything, you're going to feel it glowing. You're going to feel that uh, that that you know as you're holding this this water, that that it's basically become uh, uh, charged with that that positive intention. Okay. All right, great. I'm going to do that tonight. Thank you very much, EA. You're welcome. All right. Cool. Was there, Roscoe, was there anything else you wanted to, because if you have something else to ask, please do. I was just, um, I know that the topic of astral travel is definitely something that I want to be able to fit into. So, um, I don't know, Roscoe, was there anything more that you wanted to ask him, maybe in relating to the, because I know sleep paralysis sort of ties in with astral projection and all that. So. Right. Well, that's what I was, well, because they uh, say when you get into that, like, um, that uh, vibration state, you know, yeah. that's kind of like, uh, well, when I started learning about that, I was thinking, you know, I have that happen to me all the time, you know, and I've been trying to use that, but it seems like when I try to use that, that's when I end up with the demons or with uh, the sleep paralysis, so I've kind of just turned away from doing that lately, you know, kind of just turning on my side and uh, going to sleep. Yeah, when you, you know, when, when, when you have soul travel experiences, it's, it, it is really important to feel like you're in a, in a, in a safe environment. Um, you know, if you have, now, there's there's an axiom that that where your mind goes, the rest of you follows, and so 
if your mind is in, in, in any sort of anxiety or fear, and then you astral project, you're going to find yourself in a realm of anxiety and fear and uh, surrounded by it. And that's not where anybody wants to be. Well, the, the reason my mind would be in anxiety and fear is because before, like I say, mm-hmm. when I wasn't conscious, that feeling did bring me anxiety and fear because I knew that was the sleep paralysis coming on. I knew the uh, terrifying images were coming. Hello? Okay, still good? Hello? I am getting a bit of feedback here. A little bit, a little bit of a uh, little bit of static, but uh, okay. I think we're all still here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did you, did, did, you, did you hear what Roscoe said there? Maybe just one. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, one second. Let me uh, try to resolve. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think I'm uh, Roscoe actually dropped. Oh, um, Roscoe. Roscoe, uh, uh, if you want to try calling him, please do. But I think John was just over on the line and talking about Roscoe. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I think that as we touch upon soul travel, travel, and astral travel, travel, and again, again, sort of being maybe a step here, like you may, may not be in your will, really you're calling to call soul travel, travel, and astral, like, 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 explain to us, like, what, like, what, what is happening, like, what, what, like, what, like, what, 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 like, what, 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 you know, it's sort of, sort of, like, relevant, and what does it mean to actually soul travel? Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I I can barely make you out at this point. Okay, okay hold on. I gotta just see. Uh, 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 all right, hold on, guys. We're just gonna do a couple technical problems here. Um, yeah, let me hear you right now. Okay, guys, we're gonna have a live chat. Guys, got a live chat. Live chat. Oh, okay, this happened. This happened. Alright, EA key, EA key, chat and chat and hear me, because this actually happened last time. Yeah. Alright, yeah. yeah. It, it'll fix it, it'll fix it. Okay, alrighty, so, okay, I think, I, I think, I think we're back, awesome. Um, yeah, now, now, uh, uh, with, with, uh, what, 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 uh, the caller was talking about, uh, uh, a minute ago that, that, uh, basically he has these attacks and, uh, um, and so, so, you know, that does create that fear and anxiety and, uh, um, then, then that does basically make it extremely difficult to, to, to safely, uh, soul travel or, or project. Um, so what, what, uh, what he would need to do is, is basically choose a time other than when he's going to bed. Uh, laying in your bed is the worst possible place to soul travel. Um, you know, once again, you're, you're, you've designated your bed and, and, and that time of night to sleep. And so you lay down and you sleep. You, so, so if you try to, try to soul travel or ask for Jack, you might be able to, but it's not going to be very controlled. Now, one thing I do want to explain is that uh, in order to reach any of these states, I mean, once again, this is not this is not some you know fluffy religion. This isn't some you know uh, um, self help you know positive thinking type of thing. This is an actual science, and and with this science, uh, all of these things are are, are triggered by brainwave states, uh, specifically the uh, the theta brainwave states. So if you drop your brainwaves into theta state, you start triggering gamma reactions, which are, are off-the-charts brainwave activity. Now, that happens as you're falling asleep, and that's why people will have spontaneous astral projections and soul travels and spontaneous visitations of spirits while they're falling asleep or right right before they wake up because they're they're passing through that theta state. Now you can you can get the theta state by doing that uh, that exercise I talked about earlier where you're you're gazing at uh, at the air in front of you and you're seeing that static appearing in the air. That is going to uh um uh that's going to drop you into the theta state pretty quickly and from there you can basically do any of these occult operations with with perfect success. So, uh, you, you would want to choose a time of day other than when you go to sleep because, you know, that, that, that's obviously designated for, for sleep and, uh, and just sit in a chair and, and, uh, uh enter the, into that theta state. And then what, what I've found is, is first of all, I don't use the term astral travel very much because in the, uh, the map of, of the, uh, basically the, the occult cosmology, 
you have the physical plane, and then right overlapping into the physical plane is the astral plane. But then above that are at least 12 other dimensions, mm -hmm. 12 other realms that you can reach into. The astral is just a tiny sliver of what's possible. Um, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. But, uh, but if you're only focused on astral travel, you know, you, you're missing out on a huge part of the picture. So, so I refer to it as soul travel because that basically just shifts your perspective away right. from the astral plane. And, right. uh, yeah, so, uh, so what, what, what I'll tell people to do is get, to get into that theta, that theta state where, where you can see that static in front of you, you'll almost lose equilibrium or you'll feel like you're floating in space. And a lot of people who are spiritually inclined and who meditate and, and uh, even, even if you just go out and sit down in, in, in nature and, and, and observe nature, you'll find yourself as your, as your mind's wandering off that, that, that you start feeling like your body is just kind of tumbling in space, you, that you lose your equilibrium. And uh, and that's a, a basically a pretty pretty solid physiological significator that that you've shifted into the theta state. Uh, now once you're there, you can close your eyes and and uh, have have your inner vision reproduce the image of, of the room that you're in. So you you would basically just uh, and you don't want to force it. You don't want to say, okay, well where where where's the door at? Where was that table at? You just let it kind of uh, uh, materialize in your inner vision. You let it all just flow into place. You want one one secret to all of this is is to relax. These are very very natural states to be in. Um, you just have to relax your way into them. The, the harder you try to force any of this to happen, the less likely it is to happen. Mm -hmm. So, just relax. You relax. Let let the image of of the room that you're in kind of drift into your mind until you can see it clearly in your inner vision, at which point you can basically, in your inner vision, move towards an object. And what you're going to find is that uh, um, the first few times, it's going to feel like it's imaginative. It's not going to feel like you're actually moving anywhere. It's going to feel like, well, I'm just sitting in a chair and I'm imagining that I'm moving. But uh, once again, where the mind goes, the rest of the, the, rest of the self follows. So what's going to happen is, is that as you do that a few more times, and usually it, is, it should only take a few repetitions of actually doing it, um, what, what you're going to find is that what's called your proprioception shifts as well. Like proprioception is basically uh, how, how it, it's the, uh, the sense of our location in, in, uh, um, in context of, of, of our environment. And, uh, and and so it's it's your equilibrium. It's your feeling like uh, you know you're this close to a wall and you're this far away from the door, and uh, and that's going to shift uh, completely. And that's when an actual travel occurs is when when you can feel yourself soaring through the air towards the object and then stopping in front of that object. Yeah, that's you. You can hear me okay right now, right? Yeah. You now it, yeah. it's cleared up completely. Yeah, that's weird. It's done that twice in a row now in the past episode, so it might be a regular thing we'll have to get used to. But yeah, what what you're actually talking about that that was actually something uh, I was doing out in the forest today. Like I was just uh, before I was heading over to the library, I go and I sit in the forest and I meditate for a while. And and pretty much what you're what you're explaining is something I was doing. I was you know picking a spot sort of in front of me, open eyed, and then like allowing myself to get to that point where like yeah, like reality literally begins to look different. And then specifically what you're saying, like the part where you begin to feel like that dislocation and almost as if you're like moving forward and you're floating and stuff like that. So um, almost as a personal question for, for me, again, and if you can just sort of reiterate and add on to, once I sort of get to that state, like what sort of things can I can I do? Or what, what, what could I explore? Oh, wow. You know, when, when I first learned how to do this, and, and, you know, I tried for years to try to try to astral travel and, and soul travel, and, and uh, I didn't have much success with it until it happened almost spontaneously. Just, just looking over the city, I just chose a spot that was several miles away, and with an exhalation, I was out of my body, soaring towards that street corner, and then I stood there, and I, I mean, I, I'm standing there, and I'm watching... Everything happened around me. Cars pass, and a guy walks out of his house and gets into his truck, and and uh, and then boom, on the back of my body, gasping for breath. I mean, it was intense. And uh, and from there, I started just uh, experimenting with it, and and 
basically bringing it in, to, uh, fine tuning it, and dialing it into a, a, a continuously re uh, repeatable cycle where where I knew that I could create these shifts and just do it. And 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 then I started just you know uh, playing with it. Really, I'd, I'd go visit people and uh, um, and then come back and then call them, and be like, hey, how's it going, and see you know what they're doing and if that aligns with what I had seen. And uh, you, you you you'll play around on the physical world a bit just to you know go peek in on people and and see you know see things like that and it's cool, but really that's that that's that's not the ultimate intention. What what we're really doing doing this for is to come to a full awareness of of uh, your true identity, and your true identity is not this body with you know five fingers and toes. Your true identity is limitless. It, uh, you know, it, it is omnipresent, and uh, and so what you're going to do is 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 learn how to get from the physical into the astral plane, and you can do that pretty easily uh, through gateways um, where you can look in grimoires and there are gates and grimoires that you can use. There are uh, uh, weak spots uh, in 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 on the earth where where you can see, uh, you know, you, you'll, you'll go to these places, especially out in nature, where you'll 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 cross over a certain point and almost get the chills, and you'll go, you know, something's odd about this place, mm -hmm. and uh, and that that's almost like a weak spot between the physical and the astral, yeah. and you can, yeah, right. yeah. Go, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, yeah, like uh, places like that, it's like the the veil is thinner between the, like the space between the worlds. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So so you can what you can do is when when you leave your body, uh first of all, you're not you're not restricted by space or time. So if you want to travel across the world, you don't have to, you know, uh follow the route of normal travel. You don't have to go as a crow flies. You you can simply just go, I wanna be in uh New Zealand and and uh focus on it and boom, you're there. Uh, the world around you just disappears, and and, and you find that you're in uh, uh, where, wherever your your destination is. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can do the same thing. Just go, okay, I want to uh, to travel to the astral plane. I know that there's a weak spot in 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 this particular area, so you can astral travel there, and then you'll actually see the shift between the worlds there, almost like it's a doorway, and then you just walk through it. Um, once you get through the doorway, once you get onto the astral plane, you don't need to keep using that doorway because you'll have established the experience of it. So then go, I want to go to the astral plane, and blip, you're in the astral plane. Um, and then, and then you can do the same thing. What you'll find once you're on the astral plane is, uh, if, if you, all you need to do is call out for a guide to help you. And sometimes it'll come in the form of, uh, of somebody you know. Um, uh, sometimes not. Sometimes it'll just be a, a, a stranger that, that that comes up that you know you'll call out. I need you know I need a guide to help me, and uh, and somebody will just appear and they go oh, well you know follow me here. And uh, and through that, you know, they they'll basically be able to teach you and walk you through not only how to how to perfect soul travel, but also you know come come with me to this place and I'll show you the mental plane mm -hmm. and I'll show you the formative plane and and you'll actually have these guides start walking you through the whole process. Um, so I mean that's that that's really cool on its own. I, I really, I, well that that that's one thing with this is that. Uh, I don't know that one person on their own can reach enlightenment. I think it's a group effort. It's uh, yeah. it, that, that that we all have to come together. And that's that's one thing that's so cool about this community that you've got going is that it's a bunch of people bringing all of their different ideas to the table and helping each other. And that's sure. exactly how it works on the spiritual planes as well. For sure. So I think in that uh, fr from that point, I actually think. Uh, EA, what would you think about, um, normally we do our group meditation with the show, would you be able to maybe lead us into some form of meditation as a group? Uh, like, I'm not sure if you have something in particular that you would be able to suggest, but I'd just be curious as to what, what like, something that you think uh, we could definitely do as a group here, all listening and meditating together. You know, um, what what we could do is, is actually, and I, I see that at least, at least one person on the chat room has already done that exercise of, of of looking at the static in front of them. Yeah, yeah. 
But that, uh, I mean, that's something that, that, that really we could all do and just take a couple seconds and uh, um, basically just, I mean, I just shifted my chair uh, to the to the right a little bit, so I'm not looking at the computer, I'm just looking at the air. And mm -hmm. it's, it's really important to continue to breathe. That's That's one thing. Everybody always tries to hold their breath. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to let all of your breath out instantly and get into that relaxation, or if it's going to take you a few breaths. But if it takes you a few breaths, just take those few breaths and allow yourself to settle into your chair. Mm -hmm. your so, guys, as we're yeah, I was saying, as we're doing this, like let's let's begin our meditation now. So, for all of you who are listening. Um, now, EA, I was going to, traditionally when we do this, I um, bring in like a audio frequency. So what I actually have now um, is a, a singing bowl resonated to the solar plexus chakra. So um, so we'll set it up. I'll get you to set it up. And then would it be okay to like let people sort of go to their own space for about five minutes and then we'll come back? Like, does that work for what you need to do? Yeah, that's that's perfect. Okay, so set it up for us, everybody. Start getting comfortable and just based on your direction so far, just sort of move your chair a bit to the left or right and find a open spot other than your computer screen and start softening your vision as EA is explaining. So again, so EA, I'll let you take it from here and then let me know when we're good to play the music and then we'll go into it and then we'll come back. Perfect. So go ahead. All right. Yeah. So, so just, uh, let yourself breathe. Let yourself take a few breaths, deep breaths. And let your chest just kind of relax. Let your heart relax. We all carry a lot of tension in our shoulders and our chest and our upper backs. And let that just relax with your breath. And I'm not sure if your eyes are going to close or if they're going to remain open. But either way, let yourself drift into into that uh, that space where you're not having to think, where your mind can just be released from its obligations. And your breaths might start to get a bit uh, more clarifying, lighter, more peaceful. And if your eyes are still open, you might start to see that static in front of you. Let it start developing just as it does. Don't try to force it one way or another. Just let your eyes see whatever they're going to see. Let your ears hear what they'll hear. And what, what you might start feeling is that you start to lose equilibrium. It doesn't really feel like you're sitting in a chair anymore. It more feels like you're floating in space. And as you're doing this, you can feel your third eye opening. You can feel the energy flowing up into your crown chakra. You can feel your higher energy centers opening. And you can feel that you're not only connecting to your spirituality, but you're also connecting to everybody in this community. You're connecting to the paradigm shift that's occurring on this planet. You can go ahead and start that music up. All right, so I'll just mute us, guys, and then we'll come back in about five minutes.
as if only an instance has passed. Allow yourself to reconnect with your breath. And gently, when you are ready, open your eyes and return to this physical space. All right, EA, we got you back on the air now. Yes, sir. Yes, I am. So, there you go, guys. Um, For those of you in the chat, leave a little something. Like, how was that for you? Uh, I think that was pretty interesting. EA, did you have uh, anything to say off that off the bat? Like, you were obviously meditating with us during that moment? Yeah, no, that, you know, you know, I just, I just want to, you know, once again, comment on, on, on how, how great it is to have this, this sort of community that's backing everybody. You know, it's a, it's, it's a, a brotherhood of, of, of souls, really. And, uh, and you can feel that in that meditation. I don't know if you can, if, if, if you all are able to feel that every time that you do that, but I could definitely feel that then that, that, uh, that, you know, you're not just connecting to, your inner self or to some idea of, of spirituality, but you're actually connecting to each other. And, and mm-hmm. uh, that, that, that's really an amazing thing to have. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So good job, everyone who, who took part in this. And, and even the interesting thing is always the idea that there are going to be people who are going to be listening to this show afterwards. And in the same sense that you don't have, literally have to be listening to it live with us, like in a non-temporal sense, people can, meditate to the recording and still be able to tune in and tap in and attune to the the uh, energy that you're referring to. So definitely a very unique and uh, a lot of potential behind what we're doing here. And I think that's definitely reiterated with some of the things that you've shared with us today, like the potential that we have to actually practice practical magic, each one of us. So Yeah, All right. yeah it is. Um, that said, guys, there is about... 15, 13 minutes left in the show right now. So for those of you in the chat, yeah, just leave some comments on what you, what that meditation was like for you. Like, I'd be curious if anybody actually had some sort of out-of-body experience in some way or another from that. Like, I know it's short. Um, now, that that would actually be something uh, perhaps EA, you can you can address on. Like, generally for people who are getting started with this idea and are, like, really eager to experience an out-of-body experience, um, is there sort of like a time frame for when the success will come their way? Like, is it really kind of dependent on the individual? You know, you know what what it what it really hinges on is you're going to have success as soon as you stop worrying about having success. Uh, you know, one of my my earliest mentors told me that uh, that as long as you're seeking after God, you'll never find Him. But the moment that you stop seeking Him, He finds you. And uh, and it really is that way. You have what's called the law of reverse effort, that the more effort you apply to any given task, the less likely you are to achieve it. And so if you uh, – and, and basically that, that's because you, with, with a greater amount of desire, you also have a greater amount of internal blockage. You have fear and doubt and uh, – um, you know, what if, what if this doesn't work and what if I waste my time? And there's a lot of what ifs. And as soon as you just get rid of those and, and jump into it without, without that expectation of anything at all, you're actually going to find that that's when you're successful. Um, I would build, I would build yourself up to it, uh, with, um, with, you know, j- just doing it really. How do you ride a bicycle? You just start jumping on a bicycle and going. And, uh, the first few times are going to feel like you're just playing games with your imagination, and that's fine. Uh, have fun with it. If you're not having fun with it, then then uh, you're, you're you're definitely trying way too hard. So just sit down and 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 don't worry about whether it works or not. Don't worry about whether or not you're going to be able to verify anything later. Just sit down and have fun with it. Uh, and 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 then the, the more you can do that, all of a sudden you're going to find that not that you're not just imagining shifting but that you're actually standing across a room or across the, the, the city or across the world or on another plane entirely. So, you know, it, it's just a matter of dropping that desire and that, 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 uh, um, that almost desperate desire to have it happen and just having fun with it, have a, you know, enjoying the experience. It's, it's, it's like that meditation where if, if you're trying really hard to meditate and get relaxed, you're not going to. Obviously, it's the exact same thing. You just have to let yourself go into the experience 
and then you're going to find success. So for some people, they're going to take years. For me, it took years to get to that point of letting go. Uh, some people are going to get it in their first few tries. For sure, yeah. No, it's definitely, like you said, it's all about letting go and, and just allowing that natural process to occur and, and not expecting it to happen within that first time. Like, it'll happen when it's ready. Like, it's almost as if there's some sort of, like, guardian of the threshold, which I, is an actual term, so to speak, that is sort of, you know, like, holding us back from these experiences until, like, we as, like, a spiritual being are sort of ready to begin receiving them. And and, and this is something that even applies in terms of, like, the, uh, the, the people who are interested in exploring more within, like, the lucid dream states and, and, and the soul travel. Like, as you begin to get more into it, you start to move past the trivial, and then that's when you really start to get to, like, that, the, the, those states that you, you can't even imagine. Like, it's it's easy for us to try and talk about it here, but there's, like, experiences that are beyond words that exist and, and are fully accessible to each and every one of us. Oh, definitely. You know, there, there, there are actually uh, monks in Hinduism and Hinduism who, who uh, once they reach a certain level of enlightenment, they take a vow of silence because what they've experienced can no longer be put into words. And... Uh, um, I think that each of us, I know that each of us can glimpse that and have that uh, and, and experience a, a, a beauty, a connectedness and, and peace and power beyond anything that we can ever put into words. All right. So we do have another caller uh, who's actually been on the line for a while. So I'm going to bring them on and we only have less than 10 minutes, but we'll uh, fit in just a couple more questions and topics here before we wrap it up. So caller, if you're listening, prepare to be brought onto the air within the next couple seconds. All right. So this is a uh, dark haze is on the air. Dark haze. Where are you calling from? And what's your name that you would like to go by? Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yep. We yeah. Can hear you. We're good. You could call me Ryan of the way, or just like Ryan, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And where are you calling from? Mississauga, Ontario, actually. Right on, right on. All right, so what would you like to say? Well, have we uh, talked about chakras yet? Not, uh, not today. Yeah, no. Just, you, 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 I know I, uh, I've briefly actually, mentioned. Well, briefly, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, I think I think Ryan, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, did, Ryan. Did did, yes. did you have a specific question about chakras or? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, about opening them and uh, sort of about Reiki. Okay. Um, you you know there there are a lot of ways that uh, that, that people have, uh, especially in the last few decades, have have taught about opening chakras, and. Yeah. What, one of the uh, one of the issues that that, that a lot of people uh, come up with is they, they they tell you to open up your chakras from the root chakra and move your way upwards. And uh, I I tried that for a good deal of my own uh, my own experience, and I found that it's not very effective. And I, I haven't really been sure why until I met with a uh, guru who actually said, well, you know, if you're taking it from the root chakra, that's that, that's going to be your least powerful and pure chakra. Uh, so you're taking almost like contaminated energy and pushing it up through the chakras. So that what you need to do first is is bring light down from above into your crown chakra, filter it down into your uh, third eye. And at this point, all you're doing is just feeling this light kind of entering each of the chakras. You don't have to get crazy with your visualizations or anything at this point. All it's doing is touching and filling these chakras with light. And you're gonna feel you're gonna feel uh, almost like a tingly warmth with with each of the chakras, and then just pass it all the way down into the root chakra. Feel it either flowing down your feet, or if you're if you're sitting in an asana, that you're gonna you're gonna um, just flow it into the root chakra, into the ground, and then pull it back up. Once it comes back into your root chakra, you you would almost feel like that uh, like that energy is filling the chakra to the point where it starts to vibrate. And, uh, and that will actually cause a physical vibration in the, uh, the nerves and the organs surrounding that. Uh, my, minor, minor, so it's not, it's not like, uh, your whole body's gonna start convulsing, but, um, but, but, uh, just a vibration 
enough that uh, that, that area starts to activate physically, physiologically, and, and uh, spiritually. And, uh, and, and continue just to feed that light through your, through your imagination and through your sensations, uh, until that chakra starts to, to, to feel like it's breaking open, almost like a, uh, a lotus, uh, uh, opening up or, or, uh, somebody once described it to me as a, a, a hot dinner roll opening up. You break open this dinner roll and steam rises out of it. Um, and then once that happens, just, Pull that energy up into your, uh, your, your second chakra and then your third and keep going. Take your time with it. Relax with it and, uh, spend enough time with each chakra, feeling it with energy over and over and over again until you start feeling the physical muscles and the physical organs relaxing quite a bit and energizing. You don't want it to be just a, a, a mental visualization thing. You want to encompass your entire body in this experience because yeah, this is an experience that does encompass your entire body, your entire being. Uh, so you actually want to feel each of these areas physically shifting. You're going to feel it relaxing, calming. Uh, you're going to feel a certain serenity coming into each of these uh, these areas of your body. And then just move your way uh, up your body until you reach back to the crown chakra. Yeah, at which point, I personally just lapse into meditation. Once I get to the third eye or the, or the crown chakra, I'll just, I'll, I'll just sit and meditate for... You know, a good uh, ten, twenty minutes, and 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 just bask in that uh, in that light and that peace. Cool. So, Great. Ryan, does that uh, yeah, does that answer? Sorry. Yeah, that's uh, that's a really good meditation that I'm actually gonna try out for sure after. Right on, right on. But uh, yeah, I'd like to add on. I guess it's good to eliminate your fears and stuff and try to figure out where they originated from because these can be some very big blockages in your chakras actually and it's good to understand them yeah for sure for fears illnesses uh really really any anything that's going on in our lives uh, not only is there a spiritual solution for every problem, as, as uh, Deepak Chopra says, but there's also usually a spiritual cause for every problem. And you can kind of look at that and go, well, what's happening spiritually that's, that's brought me to this point, and what can I do spiritually to resolve it? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, with that, Ryan, thanks for calling in. We only got about three minutes left. Um, you're welcome to stay here and join in this last bit of the conversation. But, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, in terms of just sort of wrapping things up here, wh what is, like, a message that you really want people to be able to take from, from listening to this in terms of uh, just becoming more aware and also in terms of, like, practicality that they can use within their day-to-day -day life? Well, I think everyone should just... First, sorry, go ahead, Ryan. You can answer that. Oh, wait. Was I supposed to answer that? Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I mean, we only got, we literally got three minutes, so if you got a quick re response, please. All right, so, uh, I think everyone should just be themselves and just spread love and just have fun and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, have fun, that's what we're doing. And uh, EA, what would your re response be? Uh, you know, I, I, I would say um, definitely, definitely have fun, enjoy it, uh, follow your passion, all of that. And at the same time, recognize that that you are indeed a living God, and you can start acting like one any time you want to. You can take control of any circumstance, any situation in your life. All you really need to do is apply yourself spiritually to that problem, and uh, and plug yourself into the system that allows you to uh, to access your own powers of Godhood, and you can you can instantly resolve any issues that you're having, and literally build an empire up around you. That's right. We have all the tools we need to get to where we're going, so everything's within arm's reach right now. So with that said, EA, thank you very much for being on the show here tonight with us, and I would love to have you on again. I'm sure all the guests really appreciated what you had to share with us. So as we go further down the road, keep in touch, and uh, you know, there's a lot more to talk about, and there's a lot more that I'd love to be able to get some of your insight on. So thank you again, and for those who are interested in learning more about EA's work, visit his website at become a, becomealivinggod.com, as well as the Facebook, which is facebook.com slash EA Coetting, E-A-K-O-E-T-T-I-N-G. And there's also the YouTube linked off there. So that said, EA, say goodbye to everyone and uh, any sort of last word. 
Yeah, you know, thank thank you all for for uh, having me here and inviting me into your community, and and uh, it, it has been a pleasure. And I do hope to be able to come back and and uh, speak with you guys again. All right, and uh, that's that, guys. If you haven't yet, join the Facebook at facebookcom paradigm Radio, ParadigmShiftCentral.com, and uh, that's about it, guys. So thanks again to everyone who listened, and we'll see you next episode. Take care, guys.